Four Killers Who Show, No Remorse in Court by Courtroom. What's good? How you day going? Morning, evening, night. Whenever you're watching this video, I ain't gonna talk your ears off, but real quick, just give your heads up. I think we all know about dog. So basically, uh, bro, in the thumbnail, I do know uh, the first dude with the dreads, the black dude. I do know about his case. I didn't go out in depth with it or whatever because, yo, once I understood what the crime was and I saw the whole defending himself in court, I was like, yeah, nah, I'm, I'm good on dog, whatever. But either way it go, though, we're gonna go ahead and jump to the video. Once you got the original video, link will be in the description below, but let's go. This is Our Ronnie O'Neal. He is a double murder suspect in Riverview, Florida. If you think I'm here to play around with y'all, God damn it, O'Neal was 29 when he fatally shot his then girlfriend Kenyatta Barron. Following this, he murdered their own daughter by striking her multiple times with a hatchet. She was only nine years old. O'Neal also stabbed their eight year old son before pouring gasoline all over the house and setting it on fire. O'Neal was arrested upon fleeing the burning house. The son was able to escape but was critically wounded and suffered from burns. The first 911 call on the incident was from the girlfriend who was heard screaming before suddenly hanging up. Eight minutes later, another call came in from O'Neal. 911, what is your emergency? Hey, I've just been attacked by some white demons. It's, right, it's a Kiki. demon eye. Right. Kiki, her name is Kiki. And she tried to kill me. And what I, huh? After the arrest, O'Neill was psychologically cleared to represent himself in court. During the trial, he cross-examined his now 11-year-old son, who he stabbed, to which the son explained everything that happened. Yo, this was so great. Good to see you, man. Good to see you, too. Did I hurt you that night? Of this incident? Yes. I did. And how did I hurt you? Nigga, you remember stabbing me, dog? O'Neill also accused the prosecution of fabricating evidence. Because he's playing a fraudulent damn recording of me beating Kenyatta Bear. <laughs> Stop playing. That's a bullshit, dog. This nigga crazy as fuck. I was so glad that kid was not scared to testify though, because this was some BS dog. The prosecution of fabricated. I already saw evidence. some of this, I told you. Because he's playing a fraudulent damn recording of me beating Kenyatta Barron. I did kill Kenyatta Barron. After O'Neill was found guilty at his sentencing, the judge went on to say this was the worst case she's ever seen. This is the worst case ever. Ever. In this really was messed up, man. Seen some horrors. He also stated that he was not sorry for what he did. I am not sorry for something I didn't do, and I am not sorry for the things I did do. O'Neill was given a total of three life sentences plus 90 years without parole. And for O'Neill's son, he was adopted by the detective who cared for him. Oh, the good night I know that part. Murders. I know that part. Good shit. This is yeah, random. That nigga three lives. <laughs> that mean even in the afterlife, 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 like dogs still gonna be in there. When they get people more than life, they should start calling it afterlife. Just to like fuck with people's head, because if you get afterlife, think about it. That'll fuck your head up. If you got some shit that was like instead of say, them saying like double life, they're like you got afterlife. But honestly though, I did wonder multiple times, like, cause I, I told you I didn't really go in depth with this one, or whatever, right? Like, man, how did this relationship happen? Because this I, I don't think this dude was acting. I I really don't. I think this was really who he was. I don't know if he became this person or this really who he was. So I legit was trying to picture two adults talking and one looking at this one, like, yo, okay. There's, these are a lot of red flags that are kind of going on my head. Or maybe they're not. I, I don't know what happened with her, but I think I do want to look a little more into this one just to see what's going on because, y'all, I just know, like, the basics. I saw clips of this on uh, social media, but let me get back to it. This one felt too weird to me. Like, it was one of those cases where it's so much extra ish behind it that it will start digging coming up in the ish and i was like i don't feel like dealing with it parole and for o'neill's son he was adopted by the detective who cared for him the night of the murders this is randall moore he is facing three life sentences for crimes against his former wife therese ann lynch Lynch had left her husband and filed a protective order against him. This resulted in more kidnapping and killing his estranged wife. Officer Todd Rowland responded to the cries from the apartment, where he was then shot and wounded. Okay, 303 Adams been hit, officer down. Suspect armed with 20 shells. Advises nobody come to the door as he will shoot again. 
Shortly after, Moore had a phone call with a 911 dispatcher. Listen as he explains his motives. I didn't want to do any of this. Okay. But I'm telling you, all I wanted was my son. I just wanted to see my son. I knew it was going that direction. That's all I cared about. Not long after, Moore. I knew it was going that right direction. I don't know what's going on, but it always got a direction more, more than likely, man. We will talk at the end, though. It's always for the kid. I mean, hey, I've heard cases where it has been, the other end has been dangerous to the kid. So, yeah, I will go that extent to do whatever I got to do to, to save my kid if it's for real. But it, it's, it's so rare when I hear those ones, man. All right, no more rent. I didn't do any of this. Okay. But I'm telling you, all I wanted was my son. I just wanted to see my seven-month-old baby. That's all I cared about. Not long after, Moore surrendered, and for Officer Roland, he underwent surgery for his hand. As the verdict is read out, Moore gives nothing but a slight nod. We, the jury, find the defendant guilty of murder in the first degree. We, the jury, find the defendant guilty of kidnapping in the first degree. Guilty of sexual abuse in the first degree. Guilty of attempt to commit murder. At Moore's sentencing, Lynch's mother gives a victim impact statement. What you did to my daughter, Teresa Ann Marie Lynch, was evil, hateful, and despicable. You are now dead and rotting and repulsive to me. Read the journal she wrote, she hated you. Thank you, Judge She hated you. I don't care. You're a loser. Moore refused to apologize for his actions, saying he had no remorse for what happened. And I'll tell you point blank, I have not one ounce of remorse for Tree Sand's death. It could have all been prevented. All you had to do is let me see my kid. Now you're never gonna see her again. But now comes the judge. Mm. If anybody didn't This definitely I will say this though, again, I don't know nothing about this one, but it, it don't it don't sound like no ins insurance issue. You know, some sometimes it'd be for like, oh I just if I can't have you, no one can or insurance. Ooh shit. Cause he, I, unless he just really a, a heartless motherfucker, but he sound like dog. I don't give a. F I, I, hey, I want to see my kid. You see him's death. It could have all been prevented. All you had to do is let me see my kid. Now you're never gonna see her again. But now comes the judge. If anybody didn't know what a piece of work you were before you start talking, they know it now. The court doesn't allow me to punish you any more than I'm doing now. If I could, I would. Moore was given a total of three life sentences Damn. plus 25 years for the attempted murder. Hey, and these motherfuckers are like this trick, treat cans, is boy. Keith Ferguson. From Damn, this years. nigga. He was sent to <laughs> Look at Dan, look at Kara, but hold up, dog. For the attempted murder. I already know this shit about life to get crazy. Let me go plus back. Plus 25 years for the attempted murder. This is Keith Ferguson from Kalkaska, Michigan. He was set to court for 12 felony counts, including kidnapping and murder. For 12 felony counts, including kidnapping and murder. Are you? Okay. Well. Ferguson, who was 40 at the time, was engaged in a divorce argument with his wife, Tiffany oh, Ferguson, shit. when he began to suddenly beat her, followed by fatally shooting her in front of their four children. He then hauled the children over to Tiffany's parents' house, where he fatally shot his father-in-law. After fleeing the scene, that mean he Ferguson always hated him. Please don't do that to these kids parents house where he fatally shot his father-in-law after fleeing the scene ferguson stormed a nearby house taking the owner hostage and barricaded himself inside the home after a seven hour standoff ferguson was arrested the defendant has already murdered and murdered multiple people and fled and has taken hostages during ferguson's court appearance his attitude and remorse towards the situation baffled everyone all right mr ferguson at his sentencing, Tiffany's best friend gives a victim impact statement, saying she always felt that Keith would hurt his wife. I knew one day he would kill her. Mm. She would always reply, he loves his kids too much. He won't kill me. He loved them so much, he murdered their mother and grandfather. When asked about his children, Ferguson never desired to see or speak to them again. The judge responded by saying, You may not meet the clinical definition of insanity, um, 
but there's clearly something fundamentally wrong with you. Ferguson was given a life sentence without the possibility of parole. I see y'all in hell. Damn, this man. is Mike. He can't dare look at them kids, yep, because he will break that. I, that was the only piece he felt like he had in this world, probably. Man, this shit is crazy. This is Michael Swanson, who was 17 when he went on a killing spree of two Iowa uh, gas station attendees one. in the span of an hour. Where did you shoot? Front of the body? Yeah. In the face? In the face? Okay. Right, right in the face. <laughs> Swanson entered a gas station in Elgano, Iowa, in a ski mask and a handgun, demanding cash and cigarettes from 47 year old Vicki Bowman Hall. Despite following the request without hesitation, Swanson still shot and Damn. killed her. An hour later, in Humboldt, Iowa, Swanson repeated the same act in another gas station, this time killing Sheila Myers. He was arrested 60 miles away from the shooting when authorities identified his vehicle. With both victims following his request but were killed anyways, oh, yeah. it indicated that murder was this. Swanson's primary goal. How did, how did it feel when you pulled the trigger? I mean, some people say that, you know, it feels powerful or that it's kind of a rush or what did you feel when you pulled the trigger? I feel powerful. Swanson was charged with two counts of first degree murder and two counts of burglary. All allegations of Swanson's motives were answered by himself. I then intentionally, deliberately, and with premeditation shot the clerk, causing her to die. I did this with a specific intent to kill her. Now, as yeah. one of the victims the gives a victim impact statement, Swanson sits completely emotionless. How could you do what you did to my mom and my family? I want to know if you're even sorry. Are you sorry for what you did? My mom was not only completely 100% innocent, but she was also a defenseless woman when you came in with that gun. You said you did it for cigarettes and money and so no one can mm -hmm. identify you, but I think that's a lie. You did it as you later said on that it was so you could feel powerful. As Swanson was sentenced, he Damn. smiled and laughed. Cold blooded murder. Cold blooded murder, young man. You are dangerous. You are unpredictable. Prison for the rest of your life. Swanson was given two life sentences and four years into his sentence, he slit another inmate's throat. Damn, yeah, I do. I know that one. Damn, and she gonna see that moment for the rest of her life. Basically, her spewing her pain out to him. At least just looking for that that little sympathy, just a little bit. But like, no, you got none in return. In, in fact, it got countered back. Where it was like, nope. It's like I'm gonna make it even more harsh. It was like, yeah, that's gonna forever live in her head. Damn, and not even was I playing devil's advocate. I was being dead ass serious though. Like, because we hear actually stories like this for real, where it's like some girls will hold that baby. Over the over the father head, seen it in my own household. Ain't my ten of personal stories. So on the ones I didn't know the case, I was like, yeah, I want to know what's fully going on. Still doesn't say it still doesn't justify like, oh yeah, this person deserved that shit. I ain't saying that, but shit, let me know what's going on. Don't play with people's kids. But yeah, I'm about to go ahead and get up out of here and enjoy my day. Do the same thing, don't you? Day, morning, evening, night. Whenever you're watching this video, but I'm out.